Hey guys, it's Ted Bogert. Welcome back to the Ted Show. We've had some cool real estate themed shows today, and we're going to continue with that topic. We have David Pupo here. He owns, he is an owner of Florida House Buyers, and we're going to talk about gaining traction, growing your business. So much good stuff. David, we're finally here. We're doing it. We're doing it right after how many tries? We have uh, made it to the promised land, land, brother. We have overcome the adversity. We have literally overcome some major insanity, and I'm thankful for your patience on that. <laughs> um, all right, so tell them about you. They love the 411. Obviously, of you, course. Didn't, you didn't uh, five years old say, "Hey, I want to, I want to be a house. I want to own a company that said Florida House Buyers." I mean, I wish I was told it that early, but, you know, everybody's pitched the uh, the old I want to be a baseball player, firefighter, police one and, and, uh, and of course, be an astronaut. But um, it's something I've, I've had more passion about um, than I can recall. Maybe when I was playing when I was playing baseball full time, um, I started uh, I lived in a small town uh, called Cooper City right near Fort Lauderdale. Uh, I decided to go to UCF. When I got accepted, go yeah, go Knights, baby. Uh, so, so I decided to go to UCF and I did marketing and finance over there. And so right out of college, uh, I decided to pursue uh, a position with a recruiting company. Uh, I, I've always been somebody a little bit more geared towards sales. So it seemed like a pretty good fit. And uh, while I was there, was putting in a heck of a lot of an hours for something I really didn't have a whole bunch of passion for. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I, I, I did enjoy putting people into these newer positions and I love the team camaraderie, but it just wasn't as fulfilling. And so I've had a lot of family uh, from South Florida that were, was involved in real estate. Like my aunt, a real estate agent, one of our best friends, mortgage broker, right? My mom owned a title company. So I've always been around the real estate world for quite some time. And then I just started seeing some stuff about bigger pockets. And then CFRI kind of came in, Central Florida Realty Investors. And I was like, well, I like investing. Like I said, I, I, did, I did finance as well, the UCF. And I was like, I would love to be able to learn about this because growing up, I like to learn about it a lot. And sure. I, I loved real estate. So um, I decided at about a year and a half in the recruiting company, I was over it. I was like, all right, well, I saved up about three or four months of expenses, spoke it over with my now wife. She was my girlfriend at the time. Uh, hey, I'm just letting you know, this is this is the path I've decided to go, you know? And it was, it was an intimidating one at that time, but cool. haven't looked back, man. Haven't looked back. We took well, away- I, I think you, you knew, you knew your, pa you, you realized your passion, which is such a gift because I think a lot of people go through their lives and really have never identified what their passion it's, is. It's so true. So and true. So and a lot of older people my age and older that they're still doing stuff and you know they're miserable and they're not they're not living out their passion. So how did you It's a shame. To, you it's a shame, man, because I was I was going into it with somebody actually earlier today. Uh, we were we were interviewing for an, another position that we're expanding out and the person is just sick of their job. A very common story once again. And I and I brought it up and it's, you know, we always think about it. you're putting in eight hours a day. Right. And I asked him, well, why do you want to spend a third of your life here? And and it puts that into context. We got 24 hours, eight hours, is a third of it. You got a third of your life at work. What, what are you going to do about it? Right. I, I love that because I think people want to make the leap. I think 2020 and the covid made a lot of people do a lot of things out of necessity that maybe they always wanted to do. So there's some silver lining in that whole COVID 2020 cloud. I couldn't agree more. It allows, uh, you know, hopefully, uh, you know, you, you, everybody took a little bit of time to reflect, right. And realize how fragile our world is. It seems so sturdy. And then just with a kick of a, of a new virus, the entire world essentially collapses, you know, it's, it's crazy. Overnight. It was, it was such a bizarre thing. We, we've talked about it. It just, in the beginning, everybody was just trying to feel their way. But I feel like if you took advantage of the time you had and you really did some self, like you said, self-reflection uh, and did some work, like the real work that you've always wanted to do and now you had no excuse that you couldn't do it, 
uh, it was it was the right place to be. All right, yeah. tell them about the show title. Why'd you choose it? To be able to gain traction and grow the business, right? Because it's something I'm still in the middle of and it's gained me so much value to be able to share these kind of concepts with others. You're learning from somebody who's A, still going through it, but has still learned a lot and has made a lot of progress in, in a short time. Uh, it's, it's something I'm always reading about. It's something I have hired mentors about. It is something I take courses on that I realize and I love about being an entrepreneur is that it is never ending. Yeah. There is no, even Jeff Bezos and Elon Musk, the, <laughs> the most rich people that there is on this planet, there's always something more, you know what I mean? And I think that's, it's beautiful and it's yet somehow always making yourself starving for more. So how do we gain, how do we gain traction? How do we in this world and our markets, especially in our industry, how, are, how would you recommend or give them some nuggets they can take on how they can actually gain the traction to grow the business? All righty. So the first and foremost thing, because I learned this and I've also helped out a lot of people with gaining traction in their own business. Um, nothing I've done consulting wise. I just I do a lot of networking events and people ask. The number one thing I realize that have a lot of people in common is a great shiny object. <laughs> that is easily the thing that loses all traction. You know, uh, the old phrase, if you're trying to chase two rabbits, you're catching zero, right? Yes. That's that's it. That's that's it in a, in a, in, in a easy, easy metaphor right there. It's really defining what you're trying to get. And when you get that, you set that goal, you let the distractions get away. Yes. If you're trying to do this, do that, do this, do that, do this, do that, you're never going to gain any momentum, right? So having that um, magnifying glass in the sun approach, right? The only way that that magnifying glass gets hot enough to burn anything is that you have to keep it absolutely still and let that energy behind it, aka you, go through it and magnify it and keep it there. It's going to stay very cold if you keep on moving that magnifying glass. But if you keep it there, that concentrated energy is going to give you a lot of reaction. Absolutely. I love that because I think people uh, don't realize that they are the key. They're the key. They're the they're the lights trying to get through that magnifying glass. And the thing is, is that people want to do it. And I had a lot of people before we went live say that I love this topic because I want to grow my business and I feel like. I am just pedaling 24 seven on a bike that's going nowhere. hundred uh, percent. They don't know how to do it. And then especially in our markets, because there's so many challenges right now, uh, they're, they're not sure what to do different in order to grow the business. Yeah. So that's, that's an, a very interesting concept because almost anything, unless you're designing an original concept is how to differentiate yourself. Right. Um, and the easiest way that I've been able to find that resolution is inside. You can't you can't have a scenario where you're trying to be something different uh, and, and you're not that part of that. That's just putting on a costume. That's a facade. You have to think about what you bring differently. What is it about you? What is it about me, David Pupo, that is different than another investment company or another real estate agent? Right. You have to have an internal awareness about what is it that makes you a little bit different. And when you have that kind of resolution and clarity, that's when you can really gain that traction and be focused on it, right? Yes. If you're trying to come up with something, it's it's, it's just tough. You have a natural self-awareness of about who you are, Ted. You're, you're a very community-oriented per person, right? Yes. Did somebody tell you you need to be a, a community-oriented person? I think you already just had it inside of you. Right, you're right. I, I think, People have it, but they don't have, you know, this has taken 750 years to get to where I'm at because uh, that self-awareness takes time. Yeah. And if you're surrounded by people who are toxic or maybe uh, want to keep you down, then it takes even longer. I think a lot of oh, people man. have it in them, but they surround themselves with a lot of people wanting to keep them down. And so they never are able to break out of that chain and gain the traction they need to do the things that they want to do. 
A hundred percent, man. You you are you are the average of the five people around you, right? Isn't that the, that the uh, the phrase right there? Or beds yes. and birds of a feather flock together, right? <laughs> it's going to be really hard to break out of any kind of addiction if you're always around it. <laughs> Agreed. And I think people just don't know how, but I feel like all the stories I've heard, 2020 really helped a lot of people finally take a leap that they had been afraid of or had been encouraged not to do. Uh, because they were forced into a corner where they didn't have a job. They got yeah. furloughed. What else are they going to do? They've got to figure out a way to make a living and maybe working on their dream is the right time. Was that yeah. the right time? Tell us about uh, the market because Florida house buyers, uh, tell us a little bit about what you all do and then what you're seeing out there in the market. Yeah. So what Florida House Buyers does is we are a real estate investment company that's primarily focused on off market acquisition. So we're dealing directly with sellers. Um, we work with agents all the time. Um, we've, we've purchased a couple of agents deals and agents have sold our deals when we do uh, any kind of fix and flip um, or if we're looking for rental company, uh, rental properties. So we, we started here in just central Florida. Um, after a short time with my partner, Jason, uh, with the company, uh, he is the integrator. So I'm the visionary. That's that's a fun. Another fun way of saying CEO. And then Jason is my CEO, my 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 integrator. So I come up with the visions and he's the one who could tell me if if it can be put into reality. Right. So my reality was getting not only Central Florida, but even in a better area, a bigger area. So we went and now we're in the entire state of Florida, right? Uh, and then we've even expanded outside as of six weeks ago. We are in North, South Carolina, Georgia, and Louisiana. Nice. Yeah. I, mean, I think that's amazing. I th but you've worked on it. You've gained traction and grow right. your business. You've got a, you're following your own lead there, which is, which is awesome. Give them before, before we wrap it up. I always anybody who's in real estate, I like them to give their perspective on the market right now. Yeah. Hey, man. Um, as I've, I, I usually go over this data with our with our team uh, every time that uh, the Orlando Regional Realtors Association Aura comes out with it, uh, and like looking at the total amount of listings, right? Total amount of properties being sold. We are hovering, and I, I didn't get to see the stats that came out today for May. So I, I might be a little bit off, but for the prior months, the entire market here in Central Florida is hovering just about half a month of inventory. So for anybody who who uh, maybe doesn't understand how scorching hot of a, of a uh, current market we're in, I would say a pretty healthy amount is anywhere between three, four, maybe five months of inventory uh, to be able to get sold. We are at half a month. That's crazy. So, so that means that, and I've seen the data, uh, like I said, for the previous two, I didn't see May, but I saw April and March. Um, we are selling more properties than are being listed. So, that is what's continually driving down the amount of weeks of mark on, on of, with the total inventory. So it's it's insane. I've never seen That's seen it quite like this, and it's and allowed us to also make a pivot. Um, while we were maybe focused a little bit more on rentals, we're also now going to take cap. We're going to take full advantage of these low interest rates and FHA also expanding out how much they're loaning, yeah. and we're going to fix and flip, or heck, maybe we're even buying properties that don't need much, but we're just gonna buy it and put it right back on the market. None of our properties have lasted more than two weeks on the market right That's now. Crazy. So, crazy. so you know, we're gonna, and, and this is always an ability to adapt. You gotta sense where you're at, right? Because yes. I'm sure when we do have some kind of uh, imbalance and we go down for a bit, I'm sure I'm not gonna be so heavy on my fix and flip and, and buy and resell model. But yeah. right now, it's, it's, it's crazy not to it's a crazy. It's, it's crazy not to yeah. that if you, all right. So tell them the best way to reach you. What is the best way if they want to be a client or they want to learn more about what you do? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, you can always reach me through social media. Uh, it's, it's just very simple with Facebook, David Pupo, uh, Instagram is at David Pupo underscore. Um, you can reach me at my email as well, david at myfloridahousebuyer.com. And I also have a cell phone if anybody wants to reach out to that, 
five, two, six, three. Perfect. All right. We did it, man. We got it, man. You I told it. you. You nailed it. You nailed hey, it. This time. I'm a big fan of overcoming adversity. Woo, I knew this was going to happen. It. Uh, you did a great job. You all know, reach out to David. He's got a lot of interesting takes and a lot of great experience. It's wide range. And so if you're in the market, uh, you definitely want to reach out to him. Thanks, David, so much. All right. Hey, guys. man, I'm so happy. Listen, I want to give a quick shout out to Ted. He doesn't get enough credit. Thank you for being able to do what you do for the city of Orlando and putting a lot of people into an opportunity like this where they get to promote themselves and, and bring about their business. Ted, like I said, in and you being that kind of community li liaison, you didn't have to, to ask people. You knew that you wanted to do it. And I see what your schedule is like, brother. You do this a lot. It takes up a lot of your time. And I'm really happy that it still gets you charged up to do it, man. It's it's a true blessing that we have somebody like you in this community. That's so kind. Thank you very much. Absolutely, I, brother. I do love what I do. And I love having all the guests come on, especially when they share. You guys impart your wisdom. You you give them nuggets that people can take and utilize and think about. And that's why just continuing to showcase people like you and what you do is so important for everybody. Yeah. Um, can I give one, a couple more nuggets before we end? Okay, I'm listening. If you guys want to take your entrepreneurial stuff very serious, go read books. I can't stress this enough. I can tell you my income and my knowledge has it's more than 10x when I started reading stuff that I got focused about, right? And so I'll give you, I put gain traction. That's a book. Go, it, the book is literally called Traction. It learns, it's a great way for you to learn and develop a company. It's Love a great that. one. Absolutely great one. Look at people like Mike McCallowitz, great author. He loves teaching smaller entrepreneurs. And one of my favorite books is called The One Thing. The One Thing is by Gary Keller. That one is going to be able to change your mindset about priority versus time management. We can all we can all uh, use a little bit more priority management. I'm still always refining it. Those three kind of resources. If you want to become an entrepreneur, those are great three resources for you guys to start. And please, please take action, guys. That's I didn't get to go over a second one for you guys with, with gaining traction. That's the second one. All right. Get the focus make the action happen. So you have to come back and talk about that. All right, David Pupo, thank you for being on the show. Isn't he Absolutely. Thank you, brother. We'll see you guys. Everybody have a good